on Liverpool Live. Liverpool Live. Oh, dear, dear me, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Webster's here tonight from 10 o'clock. I'm here from 7 as well, back again tonight for the This Is Soul. But right now, the sun's come out where the righteous man's here. I've been trying to get this guy in the studio for ages and ages. And we do go back an awful long way, even though he may not remember, but... He's here now, Ricky Tomlinson. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How are you? I'm on top of the world, Ken. I know, you look brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I'm busy and I'm enjoying life and it's great. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's coming up to Christmas. Are you a Christmas boy? I love Christmas. But I know. I, because I've got grandkids. I've got a great grandson, never mind. But I've got grandkids and I love it. I ruined them. Yeah? Yeah, well, that's what they're for, aren't they, Absolutely, grandkids? yeah. Yes, I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I love it. And even when they come to visit us at... It's not just I, your granddad. I always have some sort of game or yeah, yeah. play a trick on them or something. And Rita thinks I'm mad, I but I mean, it's What's me. your memory of Christmas, Rick, when you, when you were growing up? Well, I was, I was I read in Land Street off Awet Street. OK. In a little two-up, two-down terraced house. And we had uh, cold water tap, obviously, and <laughs> toilet down the yard. Yeah, that's and right. I thought we were a bit posh because, although there were six of us, there was my mum and dad, me and me three brothers... I thought we were a bit posh because I don't know whether we were, we were the only ones because I know they could have been, we had electric. We had electric. <laughs> All my mates had gas lamps, gas lights. Yeah. And when we'd be in their house for night when we were growing up and we'd act in the goat, you'd smash the gas mantle and there'd be murder. You'd have to <laughs> run somewhere. So yeah. I always thought we were a little bit posh because we had the electric. <laughs> so as time went on, we got the electric radio and then yeah. later on, the little 12-inch telly. <laughs> But it was one. It was wonderful. I know. And, and my mum and dad. My dad was a baker. He okay. was a, ha- a hand baker, and he worked nights. He worked on nights for twenty-seven years. Wow. So he he would leave the bakehouse at sort of seven o'clock in the morning, come home, make the fire, light the fire, and there'd be balm cakes as we call them in them days. Yeah, we yeah. call them baps now. We don't I think know. Yeah, yeah. there'd be balm cakes on yeah. the thing and, and a plate of toast. Uh, and and he, he was wonderful. My dad was a real. He was. Great. The finest and toast in the world, Rick, wasn't it? On the fr- on the flame, on the fire. Oh, I absolutely. Toasting fork on you. I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you know, when kids used to say, "Oh, I'm terrified of going home. My dad's going to do this. My dad's going to do that," and I couldn't understand it. And as I say, I was mischievous. So to be for us, us four lads in in a bed upstairs, a big bed in the only small rooms, weren't they? Yes. And we'd be misbehaving. And my mum and my mum would say to me dad before he was going out to work at night, go upstairs and teach them lads a lesson. And he'd come bounding up the stairs with the stair rod. And he'd go whack, whack, whack. And we'd scream, we'd all be screaming. And then when he went out the room, I'd say to Albert, he missed me. <laughs> and Albert said, he missed me. And David said, he never hit me. I... <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know, when he went downstairs, yeah. I always remember me, and my mum would say, serves them right. And he never touched us. He never did. He was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, you've crammed so much into your life, Rick. I mean, I can't even yeah. do it because I know we're on a little bit of a, t- a tight runner here today. Um, but I, I do intend to do something uh, special in the new year with you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you've crammed so, so, so much into it. I mean... Yeah, I'm just, the, the, the phone's going in. Uh, a guy who, who used to work on he worked on your Christmas single, uh, Steed and Woody. <laughs> <laughs> was that the one with Noddy Holder? Was that the one when Noddy was in it? Um, I think it's so, it, 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 he said um, I worked on the Christmas single with Ricky. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, met, um, hmm. His song was Christmas My A. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, that was great. But I've I done another one. I've I, I done a, a, a song called Are You Looking At Me? One of the Pogues. Yeah. And uh, I managed to get Noddy Older on, on it. Right. But he made me sign a contract with him. He, he wanted uh, 12 and 6, <laughs> a bacon sandwich, <laughs> and a week in my caravan. <laughs> and obviously, he never got any of it. <laughs> and he's never taken me to court. No. <laughs> But I love Noddy Older. I know. You can tell it's Christmas as soon as this, his record oh, that's right. comes on, 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 the, on the radio or the telly. Yeah, yeah, you know Christmas yeah. has started. Is There's another one here, Rick. I was going to bring this one up, but a fella called uh, Stevie Henshaw. He said, uh, I used to go 
to the Atlantic every Sunday, oh. and Ricky would be there. He, he, he wasn't classed as Ricky, he was classed as the banjo man. That's right, with John Cordwell. Yeah, with John Cordwell, yeah. And Kenny Doherty on the guitar. Yeah. Now, Kenny, Kenny Doherty was known as the man of a thousand songs. You could not get up and sing a song, if he, and, he, and he didn't know it. He would know it and he would play it. <laughs> and he had a bass player called Ronnie Allen. OK. And they were great, and they had a wonderful repartee between them. And Ron... <laughs> Ron, Kenny Doherty was introducing this song and he said, ladies and gentlemen, me and, uh, me and Ronnie Allen, he said, we used to play this song when we were in the trenches. And Kenny Doherty said, when were we in the trenches? He said, when we worked for McAlpine's. <laughs> <laughs> and I used, to, I used to just front the show, yeah, yeah. but John Cordwell was yeah. the banjo man. He was wonderful. Uh, I'll tell you what, they were, they were good afternoons. And they he were said, wonderful. Everyone knew everyone. And Stevie Hensel says it. So, so we were there on a Sunday afternoon, John. He said, and I saw you in there a couple of times. He said, am I right in saying this, that Vinnie Sinatra was the uh, compere with a couple of hairs across his head? No, I was the compere. <laughs> I was the compere at the Sunday afternoons. Yeah. A long time ago, though. It was great, though. Wasn't it honestly. just... Uh, and Pat was, the, you know, Pat was married to John Cordwell and she was, like, run the bar and everything. Yeah. But people were great. But uh, to go out on a Saturday night, if you were going to the Atlantic on a Saturday night, you had to be in by 7 o'clock. Or you did not get a seat. No, no. You never got a seat. No. But I still see Ronnie Allen. I still see Kenny Doherty. And they're amazing. They still love playing. And I, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you was, still play the banjo. Well, I, I, arthritis. I'm trying to get... I've got to get <laughs> an injection in that finger. Look. <laughs> that's all I'm years as a plaster rolled in wet trowels and all that. But, but I'm, I miss it. I miss and, it. And, and scraping. <laughs> yeah. Mambo number Mambo five. Mambo number five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Got Ricky Tomlinson with me. We're going to play a Phil Collins track and then come back with Ricky. We're here on Liverpool Live and the Double J till four o'clock.
You had to be in by seven o'clock, Rick, on a Saturday. To get a seat. To get, have any chance at all of getting a seat. Yeah. And um, the same on a Sunday, as soon as the doors opened, Sunday afternoon. A Sunday afternoon. It was, was chock a block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the people were lovely, you know. They just wanted to go out and have a laugh and a sing song and take part. Of, and and, and the, I used to get away with murder, insulting people, but obviously, <laughs> you know, not in a malicious way. No. And, and, the, and But people used to carry it on. It was wonderful. Yeah. It was a great atmosphere, you know. So yeah. are, you, are you getting your, your, your arthritic finger out to play I'm the banjo again? I'm going to see if I can have a quarter of an injection in it. You right. Know? Yeah. And then the banjo's coming out for Christmas? The banjo will be coming out, plus I'll be able to pick my nose again. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> now listen, you know, I saw you a long time ago at a charity do, but it wasn't you that I was talking to. Uh, now there's a Ricky Tomlinson <coughs> tribute, isn't uh, there? Uh, the lookalike. The lookalike. <laughs> they call him a look. His name's Will. It's a lovely story, you know. I send him old vests or whatever, <laughs> and give him photographs, and he can, But he lives in Mid Wales, and um, I, I think his wife by, uh, died some time ago. So he goes round, and, and everything he gets goes to charity. And he's got a little B&B. Anyway, he got rewarded for his charity work. He had to go to Carnarvon Castle and get a little medal off the Queen. So he goes to the Carnarvon Castle as Jim Royal, and the Queen is pinning the medal on him. And she said to him, I don't watch your show, but my husband loves it. <laughs> Will's claim to fame, <laughs> but he's a lovely fella. He's a lovely fella. Yeah. And as I say, it all goes to charity, and that's fine. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that brings us on to a great angle, Rick. I mean, you, you're already renowned. When, when I first met you in 1984, going all those years ago with the Lamplighter Club and, right. and the Shipperies, yeah. you know, um, you, were, you, were, you were a well-known figure around the town then, but you've got bigger and bigger in the world of charities. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I, do you know where, where I spend a lot of time now and I, I give them whatever support I can is, is the Florence Institute, the Flory. It's wonderful. And it's the only place I know where you can go in if you're on your uppers and get a cup of tea for nothing. And they're always struggling. They're always scratching for a few quid to pay this, to pay that. And, to, and so we do a couple of little bits for them and send them a few quid. And Because I know the, ki the kids there... It, you don't have to look after them. And they're, they're like, uh, they've got their own food bank, or did have. Mm -hmm. But the food bank is, is, is gone, you know. I mean, they, they can't even keep them going now, can they? But, you know, people call trade unions and everything, you know, if they want this and they want that. I remember, oh, late last year, it was absolutely teeming down, and I was in a food bank with um, Len McCluskey. Right. You know, the, lead, yeah. the, the leader of Unite Union. And we were giving food parcels out, bags of food and on there. And we were there all day, and he never stopped, and he always had a kind word for anyone who come in. And this fella come in, and he looked at me, seen me, and he went purple, he went crimson. I said, what's the matter? He said, I've worked with you on the site. He said, I'm, I'm a joiner. I said, no, well, what, what's the matter? He said, I've had come in here for bags of food. He said, I'm working. I am working. He said, but I've got daughters, he said. Rick, he said, I, I can't feed them. I said, that's what we're here for. Mm. Here, take a bag. And, mm. But that's how embarrassed people were. Yes. He was working and he still couldn't afford to live. No. We're one of the richest nations on the planet. Mm. And do you know what else I get a cob on? OK, I'm, I'm 84 next birthday. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. And I've had a good life. I've had a good run. But it, it, it angers me when I say our pensioners, when our pensioners, the way they get treated. Mm. You know what? It's the, you know the, the slogan now is do we eat or do we eat? I know that's outrageous. It is. Isn't that's it? outrageous. Mm -hmm. You know, and as I say, some of them are older than me, so they, so they would be, be, be around of the last the, the last couple of years of, of the war. So they've gone all through. I was born in on an, on the, in September 1939 when the war was just about to finish, wasn't it? So then people are older than me, so they've been through that, and then the build up, and now again they're under pressure again. You know, they can't go mm. out and have a laugh or go to the bingo and do it. They've got to save every penny. And, yeah, yeah. And I feel an awful sorry now for, 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 for young married couples. The mortgages are going up five and six hundred pound a month. Mm -hmm. It's outrageous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's outrageous. So the first thing I done when I started making a few bob, and I mean, and I mean this, is I, I bought my kids a house each. Not fancy big things. No, no, no. I bought me two granddaughters, a little cottage, each on the only coppers, they were only coppers, yeah. but they done them up over the time and sold them and they've got bigger and better houses. It's my duty yeah. 
Yes. It's my duty as their granddad yeah, to look yeah. after them. But then at the same time, it's my duty to look after anybody's grandkids if I can help them in any way. Yeah. And I don't want to be thinking no. to, as a saint. <laughs> no, I no. think it's my duty. Liverpool's got this great reputation, and we have got a great reputation of looking after our own and looking after anybody else. And sometimes I cannot believe when I'm sitting watching the television and listening to them people in Parliament. And listen to this. I remember taking... Just a mini a minibus for half a dozen pensioners uh, to, to the parliament. And we went into the restaurant there. You know, they have a restaurant. And uh, some of them wanted um, a little piece of cake or a crumpet or whatever. So I ordered five or six little pots of tea, little silver pots, and this, this, that, and the other. And the woman came over and I said, I'd like to pay for this. And she told me, and I went, there. And then when she gave me the bill, I went, no, I said, I'm paying for everything. She said, I've charged you for everything. It's subsidised. It's <laughs> subsidised. They're on eighty nine thousand or ninety thousand pound a year, and they've got subsidised things like that. They get subsidised travel. What's yeah. the difference? I know. I know. What is the difference between them that are on ninety grand? And, and I know. I know. It's a, a cliche now. But bus conductors say to the pensioners waiting to get on the bus, "Are you a twirly? Are you a twirly? <laughs> yeah, you know twirly. what it means, don't yeah. you? Are you because too they, early? Because they're too early for the day." They should be allowed to travel 24 hours a day on the bus. Yeah, Never yeah. mind you were twirly. Listen, oh. I, I'm going to play a song, Rick, um, okay. but, but, but our mate Steve Dunwoody's just, just hit me with another one. This, you know, I think Ricky played banjo on Nathan Carter's song, The Boat to Liverpool. I know Nathan very, very well, but unfortunately I never played on the... Didn't uh, you? No, but, but I know Nathan very, very well. His parents well. don't live far from you, do they? Who? His parents don't live far. No. Do you know, years ago, listen to this. I was going to Spain, and I was a young kid, and he's behind me, and he, and he ran up to me and said, excuse me, can I have your autograph? And I said, look, son, I'm just getting on, on the plane. I'm awful sorry. He said, but I will. Anyway, he just thought he walked away, and we got on the plane. When we landed, he was walking. We were over in Spain. He was walking, and I ran after him and shouted, hey, ah, son, come and, have, come and have your photograph now and, and, your, and your, your signature, you know. Your... And it turned out it was Jake Carter. Really? Nathan Carter's younger brother. <laughs> Well, he's married now in Dublin, Jake, and he married a champion dancer because over in Dublin they have Strictly Come Dancing and he married the number one dancer. Oh, isn't that great? Yeah. Isn't that great? Isn't, oh, that just shows you, doesn't it? It does, but, yeah. But listen, but I went to see Charlie Lansborough in Dublin <laughs> and I love Charlie Lansborough. I love him. What a lovely human being. And anyway, you know the, the score. As soon as it finished, he dead to the nearest pub. So there's Nathan Carter... <laughs> Charlie Land, but a couple of Charlie's band and uh, other other singers and two old fellas sitting there, you know. And I'm in between these two old fellas, you know. And uh, and, and, and they're asking all these questions. And these two are answering all the questions. Who played this? Who wrote that? Who was the first to record this? And when he went, I said, blink in it. I said, they know everything. Who are they? He said, oh, that's Foster and Alan. <laughs> We're going to play a song, level 42, and I'm going to hit Ricky with two things before he disappears. How did he go get over with COVID? And also, tell us a funny story about Ken Dodd. All up and coming here on Liverpool Live. <laughs>
The music you know, the city you love. This is Liverpool Live. Certainly is. Double J with you through till four o'clock. And right opposite me, old pal, Ricky Tomlinson. We're having a little bit of a laugh and a giggle here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's nice to be here, kid, honestly. Uh, great view, isn't it? It's wonderful. It's a lovely build. It's a lovely setup, actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, while you were enjoying a laugh and a giggle with me off microphone while Level 42 were playing, we've had a fantastic phone call from Typhu. What? You know, yeah. and they're, they're willing to help your institute, the Flory Institute. The Flory? Oh, yeah. That, well, lovely. We're grateful for any help we can get. It's lovely. I mean, that this is the power of radio, Rick. It is, and, and, and it's about people wanting to do a bit of good. Yes. It's about people wanting to help someone a bit less fortunate than themselves. Yeah. But that Flory's wonderful. I love it. Honestly, I pop in there at least once or twice a week. In fact, I've, I've got a, a thing getting organised. I'm going to try and get it done before Christmas. I've got Jimmy McGovern. Oh, yeah. Andy Lynch and John Martin, three writers, yes. script writers, yeah. who are going to go and give a lecture. Going to charge about three quid, two pound fifty, or three quid for yeah. people to come in. Yeah, yeah. Now, all that, it, it all, the room will hold a hundred, I suppose, or right. two hundred. Yeah, yeah. That'll just go to the Flory. And they're going to do a Q&A, yeah. help people out to write, tell them what to do, where to send it and all like that. I'll chair it. Yeah. So I, I think it's a good night out. It's going to cost them, what, three quid. Yeah. And, 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 you're going to, and hopefully you're going to have a cup of tea sponsored by Thai food. You know, you know. <laughs> because it's funny, you know. <laughs> no, but it's I drink tea everywhere I go, honestly. Yes. Honest. I, I mean, even years ago when I was going to all the big showbiz dues, free champagne... Free wine, free this, free that. I used to take my own cans of mild. And fellas used to say to me, there's champagne in there and yeah. it's free and yeah. it's free. I I don't like it. No. I like a pint of mm. mild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm not yeah. even drinking now, you know. But the, 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 the lady who runs the florist, she'll be made up with that. And with, Annie with, will with, be with, over the moon. She will be over the moon, I'm telling you. And she might come on my show. Oh, she oh she's great. She's got some stuff. Do you know what I went to see? I know John Barnes. I've never heard him speak. And he was he was doing an evening with at the Flory to raise a few quid. Okay, he was out of this world. You want to hear his speaking, lad? Yes, it's amazing. It's one honestly. It, it was it opened my eyes because as I say, I've met him and I know him and I know, yeah, yeah. And I know he does a bit of rapping and all that. That's and right. Stuff like yeah, that. that's great. But his background and where he come from and how he got in and it, it's it's a revelation. It is. Mm. Well, you mentioned an old pal of mine. You know, I'm from Bootle, and uh, this this lad was born in Bootle. And uh, when I was on City in in '84, he got a job, gives a job, and John Martin we're talking about now. John Martin, yeah. You know, and of course, <laughs> this is going to link me into nicely what I asked you before. John did a lot of script writing for the late great. He did indeed. Ken Doddy. For Doddy, he yeah. did indeed. Yeah. Doddy used to call me Rickety. <laughs> Rickety. <laughs> <laughs> When I became part of the Good Turn Society, he, he said to uh, Les Bather, who introduced me, he said, oh, he's a bit of a maverick, is that rickety? <laughs> but we became good friends, right. real good friends. And, you know, one of the little stories that I like about Doddy is, is uh, he, he, you know, when, when he was doing a show on a theatre? Yes. He would never go front of house. He would never let the audience see him before he went on stage. But one night he wasn't feeling well. And he said to Anne, his wife, I'll have to go to the bar. I get myself a drop of whiskey or a drop of rum. He said something before I go on. <laughs> so he goes to the bar and he's standing behind these young fellas and these young fellas are talking about Ken Dodd. And one fella said to his mate, you know Ken Dodd? He said, yeah. He said, uh, what's the difference between Ken Dodd and a coconut? His mate said, I don't know. What is the difference between Ken Dodd and a coconut? The other fella said, you can get a drink out of a coconut. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Doddy, Doddy tapped them on the shoulder. He said, they turned round, they both went white. <laughs> and he said, oh, Mr. Todd, we're awful sorry, we're so <laughs> sorry we didn't mean... He said, listen, I am a comedian. I'll, I make people laugh, he said. I haven't took any offence to of that at all. He said, as a matter of fact, would you like a drink? <laughs> and he said, well, yes, please. He said, well, buy a coconut. <laughs> That's how Doddy. That was Doddy. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. was funny, you know. When he passed, Rick, did that affect you badly? Yeah, it, it, was, it was like, I had to listen to this. I, here's how serious I take it. And it doesn't matter whether it's footballers, horse riders, athletes. If they're the best, they should be the best. There was a programme on the television not so long ago about who was Britain's best comedian. comedian. Right. And it was won by Peter Cook. 
Now, Peter Cook wasn't a, a, a comedian. He was a Brian Ricks fellow. He was a, you know. Anyway, uh, Caroline Ahern, who I adored, I loved her. She was higher up the list than Doddy. Doddy was about 12th. And I phoned up one of the one of the panel members and I said, what's this, what's going on here? Yeah. Doddy. I said, he's the greatest stand-up comic the world's ever seen, never yeah. mind in Britain. Yeah. I said, he'd done 42 weeks, two shows a night on the London Palladium. I said, all the biggest stars in the world were going to the Palladium from America to see this phenomenon, this Ken Dodd. Yeah. I said, and he didn't come in the top 10 of comedians in this country. I said, that's crackers, you know, but... Yeah. No, no, no. He was he was a one-off. Yeah. He was a one. And you know, did you know when he done when he done that audience with Ken Dodd, and he's doing the routine about Harold of Hastings, he said, and Harold's driving around the battlefield with the arrow in his eye, and his lads his lads were shouting to him, "Have you tried blinking? <laughs> Have you tried blinking?" <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no, he, he was he was a one off, yeah. Absolutely, and of course when Herbert went there, you know he was he was another good pal. Herbert was another one. He was a corker, wasn't he? Yes, he was a. You know, you know, once a year he used to get some women in who maybe had hard times and couldn't afford a hairdo, and he'd do them, and he used to get me to come in and put the white coat on like a. I was one of the hairdressers. Yeah, I go around these women and say, "What would you like me to do?" You <laughs> don't look at me and go. What? You're not cutting me hair, are you? <laughs> well, not if you're going to be like that. I'm not. <laughs> no, <laughs> if it was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you used to put them lovely lunches on over Christmas and there. Uh, I know. I remember taking... One day he phoned me up and he said, Rick, he said, uh, it's, it's the Christmas do. He said, there's a, a spare seat on your table if you want to bring someone. And I, f I phoned it, Randy, K what, Randy King's brother. Uh, uh, yeah. Bobby, Bobby Buzz, Buzz. Bobby yeah. Buzz and, and I said, Bobby, listen, if you're doing nothing, get down to the motor. I think it was in the motor. Get down to the motor house, I said, and blah, blah. He said, Rick, I said, just get down to the motor house. Don't be worried. Anyway, he come down, he had a lovely slap up meal. I gave him a couple of quid and he got a box of chocolates or something. He'd always yeah. got a little presents. And he said, Do you know what? He said, Two hours ago, he said, I was sitting in the house with nothing. He said, I've been here, I've had a wonderful meal, I've been entertained. He said, And I'm taking a present home. Fantastic. And that's all, that's, that was it. That yeah. was Herbert, wasn't it? I know. know, yeah. Just quickly, Ricky, I know, because you've got, you've got to disappear. Um, what lies in store for Ricky Tomlinson for 2023? I've got a, I've got a two-hander play uh, television thing coming up. I've also got a series with Sue Johnson going around the country. Oh, right. Called uh, Ricky and Sue and a Trip or Two. <laughs> We've done the pilot. <laughs> right. And she took me driving an old Allegro that we used to have in Brookside. And she said to me, I said, where are we going? She said, I can't tell you. I said, you can't. She said, no, but you'll, you'll know soon enough. And you know where they took me? No. Shrewsbury Jail. <laughs> 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 because that's the first place I was locked up. And it's now a tourist attraction. Get out. They took me to the cell. Uh, my cell's in big letters on the wall, cell 35. This is where Tomo was. <laughs> but listen to this. I couldn't believe it. Women go there for them. Um, Hen parties. They have hen parties and stay over in the cells. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> but it was anyway, so I'm looking forward to doing that. For yeah. Colin McEwen. You know Colin McEwen yes, from yeah. uh, LA Productions. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, it, it, I love this town and I love the people, honest to God, you yeah. know. And, uh, and they love you, mate. Oh, well, I, I, well, I don't know. You know. I, I, love, I, I thank them for everything. And you know, when I, when I, come, out, when I come out of jail, as I say, and I, I didn't do it easy, because I was in solitary confinement for most of the time and I wouldn't wear clothes and I wouldn't work and I'd done all that. And uh, but when I come out, I thought, like, some people would point the finger. No, no, none of that. No. There was none of that. It was, I a kid? How are you? Well done and yeah. all. And I thought, that'll do me. That'll do me. Fabulous. And people say, why are you still living in Liverpool? I said, well, where else would I want to live? Why? Yeah. Where else would I want to live? Yeah. Where yeah. else? I go away for the odd holiday and, that, you know, I've been on a little cruise and yeah. stuff like that. I said, I love it, I love the people. And it's as if I know everybody. <laughs> and, you know, people, and, and, and I mean this, you, you know so-called celebrities who get a cob on when people say, can I have a selfie or can I have an autograph? And, you know, if they say no, I think there's something wrong with yeah. them. Yeah. They owe it to them people they to do. put them where they are. Yeah. So I, when I go out, honestly, if I'm, if I'm like out somewhere of a weekend, it must be 50 times a night people say, can we have... Can we have a selfie? Yeah, yeah. And I say, seriously. And that's when I put my glasses on, my Jim Royal glasses. Yeah. And I say, I've got to put these on. And they say, why? I say, well, if I don't wear them, 
People think I'm George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, fella said, George Clooney, you're more like Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Ricky, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, sir. It's been an absolute guest, you know, and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. God bless Have a you. prosperous new year and a great Christmas for you, the kids, the wife and the grandkids and the great-grandkids. And, yeah. You know, just stay safe, mate. God bless you. Thanks very much. The one and only Ricky Tomlinson here on Liverpool Live. Are you...